Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about the origins of life. Topic for the day is going to be speciation. So without any further ado, let me get you, get you your objectives, and we'll get going. Sorry, words are hard, as always. So by the end of this video, things that I need you to know or be able to do. First one. Explain the biological species concept and reproductive isolation. So when we talk about a species, what is the definition of a species and what makes one species separate from another? Compare and contrast allopatric and sympatric speciation. should probably be able to give an example of each one of those also. And finally, provide examples of allopatric and sympatric speciation. Sometimes I get my points in there and I talk before they actually get there. Anyway, so first thing we need to talk about today is evolution. We've been talking about this idea of evolution all the way through this series, and I want to make something very clear. A lot of the times the stuff we've been talking about is microevolution. Microevolution is just the small adaptation species make to fit their environment. Macroevolution is where one species actually diverges into two, and we'll talk about mechanisms that can cause that to happen in a little bit. Just know that microevolution is the adaptation process. Macroevolution is where two species can no longer mate with one another. Which brings us to the idea of a species. What exactly is a species if we're going to go with a biological definition? A biological definition of a species are animals that can mate with each other and produce fertile offspring. Now, there's a lot of animals that can mate with each other but not produce fertile offspring. They would not count as a species. It's possible for two animals to look alike, but if they can't produce fertile, viable offspring, they are not the same species. So just recognize that biologically speaking, a species is any set of animals that can mate with each other and produce fertile offspring. <clears throat> Which leads me to the idea of reproductive isolation. The thing that actually separates one species from another is when they become reproductively isolated from each other. For some reason, they are not able to reproduce. Now, this could be some sort of actual uh, separation to where mating never happens in the first place, or it could be something that produces or prevents the would-be children from being born. Um, we'll talk about a lot of mechanisms that can cause reproductive isolation in a little bit. Just recognize that reproductive isolation is the thing that separates one species from another. They might live in the same area, but if they can't reproduce, they are different species. All right, there are two categories of reproductive barriers. There are prezygotic and postzygotic. Now, we've talked about already that a zygote is formed when an egg and a sperm and there are barriers that prevent that egg or sperm into, or from developing into an individual, or if it um, actually grows up and becomes an individual hybrid, it may not be healthy enough to reproduce. So we'll talk about those two categories of barriers. Just know prezygotic prevent fertilization, postzygotic prevent the offspring from reproducing. So barriers that cause reproductive isolation are as follows. <clears throat> All right, for prezygotic barriers, there is habitat isolation. That is where two organisms are geographically separated from each other. Their habitats are different, so they don't interact, so they can never mate. You've got temporal isolation. Sometimes animals, like you could have one set of animals that mate in May, while another set of animals mate in June. It could be even like something as similar as two types of frogs, but they are separated by time. One set um, mates in June, the other one mates in mate so they will never mate with one another there's behavioral isolation you see this a lot with mating dances in birds two birds probably technically might be able to mate with each other but if they have become conditioned to or adapted to the particular mating rituals of their species they will not mate with one another so that is behavioral isolation mechanical isolation is just where the pieces parts don't work even if, even if the animals tried they could not mate with each other and then gametic isolation would be where the sperm and the egg are too different. They can't fuse with each other. They can't form a zygote. zygote. So all those barriers are types of reproductive isolation that prevent a zygote from being formed in the first place. Now, if, let's say, two animals mate with one another and it produces a zygote, there are a couple things that can prevent that hybrid. A hybrid is a combination of two animals um, from reproducing. So re reduced hybrid viability, which means that the hybrid is not healthy. Like we might get a zygote, 
that zygote might be born, but that hybrid is not healthy enough to reproduce. So that would be evidence that those two animals that mated are not the same species. Reduced hybrid fertility. You might get a hybrid, but that hybrid may not be able to reproduce. Two quick examples of this. There is the Napoleon Dynamite Liger, lion and a tiger. It's been produced in zoos, but ligers are sterile. They cannot mate to produce more ligers, so they are not a species. Also, same thing for mule. Combination of donkey and horse, mules are sterile, so they cannot reproduce. And then you got hybrid breakdown, where this organism ends up dying quickly um, or just is not healthy. It's kind of like hybrid viability. So just remember that you got barriers that prevent the formation of zygote and you got barriers that um, prevent reproduction even after a zygote has been formed. Next topic up is speciation. Um, just quick definition of term. Speciation is simply the point at which two animal lines diverge from one another, one another and they can no longer reproduce. So once two animals have become reproductively isolated, speciation has occurred and you now have two separate species of animals. And there are two types of speciation and this is kind of where we're going to wrap up for the day. Um, there is allopatric speciation and sympatric speciation. And this talks about how the speciation actually occurs. Allopatric speciation is known as other country because this is a situation in which two species are formed because they have become geographically isolated from one another. You got the Grand Canyon there in the background and they are showing you two different species of squirrels. Um, one species of squirrel lives on the south rim of the Grand Canyon. The other species lives on the north rim. Over time, those squirrels became geographically isolated as the Grand Canyon became too deep for them to cross. As they were isolated, they became genetically different from one another, and you end up with two species of squirrels. So that is allopatric speciation. And with this idea of allopatric speciation, recognize that distance equals divergence. So what I mean by that is that if you were to pick a species in an area and then start drawing circles out from those species, you would find that the further you got get away from the original species, the less closely related those organisms will be, which makes sense because as you move away from the original species, each of those other species is going to have to adapt to the environment that's around it. So it's going to become different from the home species. Um, a case study of this is the sister, there are sister snapping shrimp. What I mean by that is the isthmus of Panama, which connects North America and South America, formed up over a period of a couple million years and researchers have found that there are shrimp that live on both sides of the isthmus and they are sister species so if you got a species on the uh, Caribbean Atlantic side you will have a sister species on the Pacific side now they are genetically different from each other enough that they are two separate species but you can tell that at one point in time they were the same species so that would be an example of that isthmus growing up and separating the two species from one another our other type of speciation is sympatric speciation, and this is known as same country speciation. This is an, um, a situation where two animals are not geographically isolated. They still live together. They still interact. But for some reason, they are no longer able to mate and produce viable offspring. So though they are in the same country, they become two different species. Though they could be in the same pond, they become two different species that can no longer reproduce with one another. A couple mechanisms how that happens to finish up. Um, there is polyploidy. We have talked about errors in mitotic and meiotic division that can lead to a polyploid situation. Most times polyploid situations end up killing off the individual, but there are some cases where polyploid individuals do um, survive, but then they can only reproduce with other polyploid individuals. In plants, this is seen a lot. There are a lot of triploid and tetraploid plants that are different from one another. And there are a couple of examples of organisms. I think there's a frog and I know there's a rodent that are both polyploid. So if you have an error in that meiotic division that allows the organism to survive, it's going to no longer be able to reproduce with a normal diploid individual. Habitat differentiation is where two organisms start using different parts of a habitat differently. So you can have living in the same tree six different types of birds, but one type of bird might adapt to where it feeds on the outside of the tree, another bird adapts to feed on the inside of the tree, one feeds towards, towards the top, one feeds towards the bottom, so they're all within the same area, but they've become different from each other such that they don't interact. And then you've got sexual selection, which if you've ever seen the 
Discovery Channel, like the Birds of Paradise, things like that, you've seen this happen, where you've got a bunch of birds that live together, but one set of birds may develop a vastly different set of mating rituals or appearance than the other set. So though they are together, and though the birds could probably mate with one another, because of mating rituals, they no longer interact with one another. So that would be an example of sexual selection. Remember, all of these are types of sympatric um, speciation where speciation occurs though the animals are still in contact with one another. Hopefully all of that was clear to you. I hope you were able to track with all of that. Thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite and we'll see you again.